Okay. How many times have you ever been in a store and you're like, oh my goodness. I thought of that thing. I could have done that. I had a friend of mine. He was driving down the coast of California and his uh, pickup and the bed of his pickup, his gate didn't work that well and he didn't like how all the wind blew everything out. So he, in his garage, sewed a, a net and made this net and took off the back gate of his pickup truck. And he loved it, and his friends loved it, and a couple people asked if they could make one for him. He's like, you know, I should turn this into an idea. And so anyway, he's driving down the road on the Pacific Coast Highway, and he gets flagged over by this guy, honking and waving. He's like, where did you get that thing? He's like, well, I made it. And the guy goes, really? Did you patent it? No. Nope. Is it trademarked? No. Nope. Oh, just curious. Next thing he knew, six months later, is one of the hottest selling car accessories out there. So what's the difference between having a great idea and executing on it and turning it into something that could be great for you? That's what we're going to talk about today because I've been able to do that, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. And I think there's five keys, five steps to turn the idea into something actually an actual good product or service so i want to walk you through things that i've done things that i've learned on how to do this okay so think about this we do not want you to have an idea in your head that you now see out in the marketplace okay so there's a lot of different paths i think to innovation success so Here's what I think. I actually look back at what is my process? What have I gone through as I've learned? So this is what works for me. I just want to share it with you. So I think there's a lot of great ideas out there, but here's the first one, ideation. And that is crystallizing your concept. Now, one of the most helpful tools that I found myself uh, is using a mind map because this is way more than brainstorming, which was for me results in lists. Mind map actually uses things that are visual. So here I actually pulled up my mind map. Where is it? I pulled up my mind map. Well, now it's gone. So there we go. Um, I, I'm going to get to that here. So give me a second. Hey, I know we're live. We're rocking and rolling. But I just literally had it pulled up for you guys. And we're going to make this work. Okay. Well, this is odd because now I can't find it. I guess I, oh, here it is right here. Okay, I'm going to hit share screen. Sorry, you guys. I thought I had it all ready to go, but I'm going to just share uh, right here. This is my mind map from when we first launched our podcast. So here's what the thing I love about mind map is you just start throwing things out here. Like I, I know this is a bit of an eye chart, so let me zoom this out a little bit. Who is that perfect avatar that I would love listening to the podcast? And then each one of these expands, right? They're married with kids. Uh, their wife would maybe like to stay at home. Maybe is private school an option, right? They're working 40 hours a week. They feel out of balance. They want more time. I put a lot of thought into the demographics and the psychographics of who I wanted to sell to. And then who did we want to interview? What were all the logistics of... This, I, if I wanted to bring this idea to life, I just started thinking about all the things. I, well, I'd have to figure out my time and my marketing plan. Do I need help? Do I have a launch team? Who am I going to partner with? Why am I going to launch this podcast? Right? Then the other thing is, what would be the benefit to my listeners? What would be the benefit to the interviewees? And and this goes on. You can actually see that this goes on and on and on. So I'm not going to go into all the detail. Then the question is, what is all sales and marketing risk? And then what would be my goals? Would it be possible in a podcast to create $20,000 a month of recurring income? I was trying to figure that out. Sorry about that. So could we get to 100,000 listeners? Well, today we have 700,000 listeners. We just got ranked number 42 globally on iTunes. So this podcast, I'm going to let you know, started out with an idea in my head six years ago. I, and I did this mind map and then I had to start reaching out to people to start putting this together. How do we brand it? So I just 
What I love about mind mapping is if something's in the wrong category, right? Like branding, format, we have all these pieces here. Maybe this goes to a different place. I can drag it and drop it. So if you haven't used mind mapping before, go to YouTube, find a great article on mind mapping, and I think you're gonna, you're gonna love it. Okay, so the next step is, let me get back here, here it is. I am still sharing. There we go. Now I can actually see my Zoom screen. So a little clunky today, folks. Thank you for bearing with me. So that is um, the idea. You're getting things out there. You're putting it down on the paper. The second one is, now I had to do a whole bunch of research. Um, I didn't want to try to reinvent the wheel. I've launched um, hardware products, software, coaching services, a podcast. Uh, there's a lot of things that I've launch and guess what uh, every there's a lot of great people in the world that have done the same thing that we're trying to do now when you do the research what you're trying to do is really get a big picture uh spend some time on the internet finding maybe similar ideas or products or businesses just like you have in mind what appeals to you about their idea their implementation their marketing uh what do you like what do you don't like what could you improve upon? Here's something that I do that I learned from Russell Brunson. He calls it funnel hacking, and I still do it all the time. Let's say you find a similar good product or service, or maybe it's somebody that has commercially succeeded in a really significant way. I will go sign up on their website, go to their webinar, get on their newsletter list. I want to see how they communicate with me because they know maybe I'm an interested buyer. What is the language that they used? What is the layout of their emails? What is their call to action? How do they get me involved? How do they finally get me? And then I'll buy it and I want to see what the follow-up looks like. I want to see the packaging if they ship it to me, if you're going to do a product. And I can tell you some of the best investments we've made are doing that. Now, this is not about ripping things off and then duplicating them. This is about taking, you know, learning from other people that have, that have succeeded and putting a lot of time and money thinking about it and modeling some of their best practices and you make it unique to you, okay? Now, number three. So number one, I've gone through the ideation, I've done all the research, and now I'm going to put my network to work. You have to think about what are the resources that you have. If you look at some of those things on there, I didn't know how to launch a podcast. I didn't know how to create a data mining software solution and market it. I didn't know how to, uh, you know, market a new coaching program. So what I found was, though, there's people in my network that have the experience, that have the time, that have the connections, that maybe have advice for me that I can help to. So I think one of the biggest benefits of social media, LinkedIn, Facebook, it expands our connections incredibly. So here's something, just my son, the other day. He was actually thinking about going back to college to get a degree in a very specific field, conservation biology. So I said, John, here's an idea. Let's go on LinkedIn. Let's reach out to some of the top conservation biologists in the world that we can find. We identified them and then we found them on LinkedIn. And my son sent out a note, totally cold, to five of these people on LinkedIn said, hey, I'm thinking about getting into this field. I would have to go back to college for it. And I would love to have a conversation. Well, the top guy in the world, it's probably a reason he's the top guy, got back to my son and spent an hour and a half with him. And at the end of that, my son was so fired up and it's just been a, a amazing experience. When you reach out for help, I, what I have found every single time is people want to help. So if you don't have the experience, you don't think you have the time or you don't think you have the resources, finances, I'll guarantee you that you can find people. Don't let those be stop you. You will find people that have overcome those, moved through those, moved around those, or figured out something really creative. Okay? Number four, this is when you launch the beta um, you know what, what it is, is, is don't be a perfectionist. What I've had to learn is what is your minimum viable product? Is it good enough? I, sometimes I spent, I spent years thinking about, I have a book that's coming out soon. 
and I'm going to launch this book. So I put in, I did all those first three steps in front of you that I just shared with you in the book that we're going to have a beta launch here actually pretty soon, but you have to get working on it. Could the book be better? Oh, maybe. Uh, if I rewrote it today, I guarantee I'll look back at it in 10 years from now saying, you know what, that could have been way better. But guess what? It's good enough. And the feedback we got is fantastic. My podcast, I go back and listen to my, where, episode 350. I listen to my first episodes. I'm like, oh my word, have I come a long way. And I have a long way to go. So trust me, here's what it is. This is your time to get vulnerable. You're exposing this thing you've worked on, your baby, your, your love to criticism and feedback. And trust me, feedback is vital. So reaching out to your tribe, however small, ask them to be part of your first course, sample your first product, subscribe to your blog, listen to your podcast, and give you honest rating and review. I never went out and asked people, hey, please give me a five-star review. So if you are listening to this, I'd love for you to listen to the podcast and give me an honest rating and review. That'd be great. And I also think, though, it's really important not just to say, what do you think? All of a sudden, people are going to just share all the stuff in their head, and it might not be useful to you as the creator and the innovator. And I think it's really important with feedback to be specific. My friend Michael Port, as I went through heroic public speaking, I was trying to get better at public speaking shared this with me. Like, John, when you want feedback, be very specific because this is about helping you move forward, not just about getting their ideas. So here's an example. Let's say you put together a part of a talk or you want to share maybe the opening of a webinar or a, a piece of content. So for example, you could tell people you share it with, say, here's, here's what I would like you to listen for. At the end of this, I want to ask you, what was my big idea? Was the information as I shared it, or maybe the product as you shared about it, what do you think was it relevant to where you are in your life today? Would it have been helpful? Another question you could say is, hey, as I shared that, was there any parts that you maybe found yourself drifting off? Those are the things that I know can actually help me go back and make my copy, make my speech better. So I'm going to ask for a very specific feedback. Remember, your goal here is to determine in this beta launch as you get it out there, whether you have something that you can take and scale and grow, or do you need to pivot and make some changes because you got the feedback. It's like, yeah, it's really interesting, but wasn't really relevant to me. Didn't really solve the problem the way that I really wanted you to solve it. Your big idea never didn't really resonate with me, but maybe it resonates with somebody else. Or maybe the opposite, like, oh my gosh, this was the answer. I've been looking for this. I want you to realize, though, it's really important about your mindset. It is impossible to fail in this part, in this phase. I want you to say that again. It is impossible to fail. And the reason is because you're. I need you to go into this phase with you knowing that you're here to learn whether you're going to scale or you're going to pivot. If everybody hates it, that is fantastic feedback. Maybe you're not going to waste the next 6 to 12 months of your life trying to make it work. Now we're going to pivot. We're just simply trying to find out what works, what doesn't. And now, let's just say it's time to scale. We're going to launch this. And here's something I would just encourage you to do. We're launching a book. I went to Amber Villhauer a friend of mine. She's done uh, best-selling New York Times, Wall Street Journal, best-selling book launches many, many times. When I'm, uh, uh, when we launched uh, a coaching course, I went through Jeff Walker's product launch formula, right? that It worked uh, fairly well for me. Uh, other people absolutely love it, but trust me, when it's time to launch, there is a ton of information on how to do this well that are very unique to whether it's a book, a product, a coaching plan, a mastermind group, okay? But here's a couple guidelines I want to share with you. Number one, plan early. Don't wait till the last minute. This surprised me as I was looking at my book launch. Amber said, listen, you need six to nine months of planning, of work, and preparation if you want to have a shot at really even being a New York Times bestseller. So that book will be coming out in April of next year. And we're already uh, building the momentum around that now in July of this year. 
okay? You have to connect with and find your influencers, people that can help you with this, that would love your product, that already have networks. What would be in it for them? Develop relationship, add value to their lives, and just start connecting. The other thing is social media. What you want to do is start planting some leaks. Hey, this is coming soon. Hey, how do you guys solve this problem? Whatever your thing problem, you're starting to get feedback, creating dialogue. Okay. I also want you to realize that the press, influencers, there's a service called Help a Reporter Out, H-A-R-O. It's a great place to get published in mainstream, massive news organizations, all the way down to small blogs. But it is not a one and done type situation. A lot of these people, they people that could help you with your launch that you would probably love to get to know and spend some time with, realize that you're probably not the only person reaching out to them. But if you're consistent and you do it with integrity by trying to add value to their lives and their world, promoting their what they're doing right now, um, just, just being a good friend, right? It's going to take a while. The other thing is just be creative. So many things like out-of-the-box things that you can do. And then seven, make it easy for people to learn about your product. Have a great landing page. Have a great website. If you go to eternal leader, or I'm sorry, beyondinfluence.com forward slash book, you'll see right now just a little bit on that page about the upcoming book launch, right? You, uh, videos that you put on your YouTube channel, stuff that's on your Facebook, what you put on LinkedIn. If you're talking about a, uh, a product and all the different topics, the problems that that product solves around it, make it really clear in what you put out there in the public. So listen, I want you to take that one idea and turn it into something that you love, that makes an impact on other people, that earns you an income, um, and just maybe open some doors for you for that next opportunity, that next idea. So for me, I love creating. Uh, we've been able to do and launch so many different things just since we started Beyond Influence just, uh, I guess, six, seven years ago. And, uh, you know, we're in the middle of creating and launching new things right now. So I love the process. If there's anything I can do to help help you, let me know. Post something here in the notes. And I really look forward to hearing from you. Please, I know on Facebook we get these, right? And then, like, it's somewhere in the past. Just remember, John Ramstead, remember Beyond Influence. If you launch something in it, I don't care whether you used any of my advice or not. I want to hear from you because I want to celebrate your success with you. I really do. I'm excited for you. Keep knocking them alive out there. And I really look forward to talking to you soon. Have a great one.